Hello world, it's Mr. Resistor again. Um, this is day two of my alpha journey. Um, so I've just logged in. Uh, one thing you want to try and make sure that you do uh, every day is check your uh, redeemable items here. Uh, um, in this case, we've got plenty of time. Some of these will can expire in as little as seven days, so you want to make sure that you're not uh, leaving anything good on the table. Speaking of good things, what we got today is this skill book for biology. What that's going to do for us is uh, it's going to let us use performance enhancing drugs, um, which are a frequent reward from uh, uh, both your normal daily login rewards and also from events. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and redeem that to the current station. Um, this uh, Mimitar Liberation Day expert system um, contains expert systems give temporary skills. Um, this will give us a lot of skills for flying various Minmatar ships. Um, that is going to be very useful, but we're not going to use it yet. We're going to save it for some later activities, um, which uh, 30 days should be more than enough for us to get through the uh, initial career agents and head into more interesting stuff. So uh, we're going to go in here to our item hanger. We're going to inject the skill. And then we'll head into our skills window, go to the catalog, and it's going to be under neural enhancement. And we are going to drag this right to the top because we want to make sure that we're uh, training this right away. Um, we only need one uh, of these, I believe, in order to uh, be able to use the basic drugs that we're, that we're given, but we can double check that. We go in here to show info, uh, required four, and this will tell us everything that uh, is going to be made available um, at each level. Um, so all these liberation games, these are for the, uh, the, uh, on the current Minmatar event. Um, a lot of these other ones are, some of them are made, some of them, uh, show up as, uh, daily login rewards, etc. Um, got a couple more in here. Um. So, <clears throat> um, now another one that we are going to want is going to be cybernetics. Um, so let me, first of all, we'll drag level 2 over here. Then we're also going to drag cybernetics level 2 over here. Um, so what this, uh, this is going to do for us is it's going to let us use better cybernetics. Um, so again, we can go into level uh, one here. Let's see. So ocular filter basic. If we look at this, uh, that'll give us a plus three bonus to perception. Um, haven't looked at their attributes yet, I can go into the character sheet. We'll open this up uh, and we will look at attributes. So this is uh, just the basic layout. I'm going to leave it how it is, but you can remap these 
Uh, start off with two available. I believe you get one extra per year. Don't quote me on that. Um, but so basically your skill uh, in each of these skills uh, relates to how quickly, or sorry, your level <clears throat> in each of these attributes affects how quickly you train skills. Um, so, and then uh, augmentations, um, which would, could be cybernetics, could be drugs. Um, some augmentations will boost your attributes, therefore improving your training time. Um, so going back to skills here, right? If we uh, go back to our biology, um, That's not biology. There we go. All right, so primary attribute is intelligence. Secondary attribute is memory. Um, we get our training time multiplier. Uh, these are all inherent to the skill. Um, and the number of skill points that we get uh, per minute, well, per unit of time is going to be based on our attributes. Um, and then, of course, Omega would make it twice as fast. Um, but we're doing it the slow way. Because uh, we're looking for the alpha experience here. All right. So, um, as you can see, I've already populated my skill training queue with a whole bunch of useful stuff um, and here I've got a skill plan that's being tracked so let's take a look at this real quick you can see this is the air minmatar enforcer skill plan we can open that up here show the plan contents um, this is only showing the skills that I haven't already trained um, and basically all I did was I went in here, I clicked start training, it added all of the skills to my list. Um, additionally, I went in and, uh, put in some skills from other skill plans that I knew I was going to want right away, right? So, um hull upgrades, uh, weapon upgrades, um, some stuff like that that's going to make it easier for me to uh, fit um, fit modules on our ships. Um, so let's take a look at that real quick. For example, weapon upgrades here. Um, if we go to the description, uh, knowledge of gunnery computer systems, including the use of weapon upgrade modules, 5% reduction per skill level in the CPU needs of weapon turrets, launchers, and smart bombs. Um, so, uh, let's go real quick to our ship fitting window. Um, and you'll see these two bars over here got CPU and power grid. So power grid is the red, CPU is the blue. Um, basically every module, so that means guns, right? This, here's a mining laser, uh, here's a afterburner, um, here's my mining laser upgrade. Um, <coughs> every module uh, requires some amount of CPU and power grid in order to be installed and activated um, if you're able to reduce those needs through uh, skills and other methods um, then uh, you'll be able to fit more and better stuff um, there are 14 fitting skills um, I have a skill plan laid out for that on another character we'll go through those at a later date it's not super important right now. Um, 
what because uh, we don't really have significant fitting needs at the moment. Um, so right now what we're going to do is um, change the fitting on this ship. So I'm going to unfit this mining laser. Um, I'm going to save it for now. Normally civilian uh, <coughs> civilian modules aren't really worth anything, so a lot of times I'll just go in here and trash them. I'm not going to do that just yet uh, because in the short term I'm probably going to need them. What I'm going to do is fit this festival launcher and I'm going to load some fireworks. Why am I going to do that? Because of this right here. Liberate, Liberation Day Parade. Um, this is part of the uh, Minmatara Empire event. There are events for each of the empires. Um, and basically, I'm going to go to this parade. I'm going to shoot fireworks at it. And that's going to give me some skill points, which uh, I will be saving for later. So... Uh, <coughs> There's a couple of things I want to do first. We'll go back into the character sheet, and I'm going to go to home station. And I'm going to set it to this station. So select home station, current station. So what this means is if I die and uh, need a new clone, that clone will show up here. Um, I find it's uh, useful to set your home station to, uh, you know, the area where you're mainly operating out of. Um, I'm going to get ships and stuff as rewards for various missions, and they'll all be in this station. So if I, uh, <clears throat> if I revive here, then that's going to save me some time. I'm not going to have to, you know, jump to another station in order to get myself into a new ship. All right, so um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save location. Um, I'm going to set this to never expire. At some point in the future, I'll probably remove this from my list, but for right now, I want to be able to uh, fairly quickly and easily get back here. So I'm going to bookmark this location. <clears throat> um, and oh, and then I'm going to set my route. So number one, um, I'm going to go up to the search bar here. I'm going to search for heck, because that's the system that today's uh, parade is in that I need to go to. It'll take a second. All right, and I want solar systems and jumps. Okay. Um, so now I've set my destination. Um, and then, because I'm going to want to come right back here, I'm going to also right click here and add waypoint. So now you can see um, I've got this uh, destination set. These are all the systems in between. Um, I'll arrive at this destination and then I'll have a road back. All right, so we'll close this. We will undock <coughs> and we will head out. Um, so now is probably a good time to talk about system security. You can see this number right here, um, also right here. Um, this is our current uh, system, constellation, region, um, <coughs> and nearest planet. Right. So anyway, this blue number right here, the 1.0, is our system security rating. Uh, 1.0 is the highest. 
um, and that's going to be that's going to be the rating for uh, pretty much all of your your starting locations. Um, and you can tell by the color the security rating of all of the systems that we're going to be passing through. Um, so Amanika is one, Ivar is one, Miracolf is going to be 0 0.9, Frarn is 0 0.8, Gang is 0 0.8, back to 1.0 at Onga, 0 0.9, sorry. <laughs> Uh, 1.0 at Pator, uh, Eister is 0 0.9, and then Heck is 0 0.5. Um, essentially, you can say that that's a rating of how safe you are. Um, anything 0 0.5 and above is considered high sec. What that means is if another player attacks you um, and they don't have kill rights on you, then. Uh, the cops will show up uh, to help you. If you're lucky, they show up before you get killed. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, sometimes you're not lucky. Um, and uh, the lower the security rating, the more, the more time it'll take for them to show up, essentially. You've got a, so you've got a better uh, chance of getting ganked. Um, that said, these systems that are, we're traveling through are all fairly safe. Um, a lot of players are more paranoid than I am. I haven't, uh, I haven't made any, any significant enemies yet, so uh, <clears throat> I'm not particularly worried uh, just yet. Um, you also have some protection as a, as a new bro. There are be larger penalties for attacking new people um, but that lasts only for a limited time um, so don't get used to it um, <clears throat> now because I'm traveling through all fairly safe systems uh, I might normally be tempted to use autopilot um, the main reason I'm not right now is just because it's slower um, there's a delay before you enter warp when you get into a new system. Uh, you don't warp as close to the gate. Um, and so there's some time it takes for you to taxi to the gate before you jump to the next system. That, of course, makes you vulnerable. Um, however, if you're, <coughs> uh, if you're not on autopilot, as you can see, you jump basically directly towards the gate um, and are able to jump relatively instantly. That is still enough time for someone to gank you um, if, they're, if they're prepared and get lucky. So uh, you can't necessarily depend on that to keep you safe, but... Um, <clears throat> So, um, but like I said, it's also slower, and uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, on traveling right now, because I don't have anything else to occupy my time. Um, so I'm going to travel as quickly as possible, and that means doing it manually. First drive active. <clears throat> so, while we are traveling... We can look at a couple more things. Uh, for the Minmatar Liberation games, we get to pick a tribe. Uh, let's see, it's in Encounters. Um, so these are the seven tribes of the Minmatar. Who am I going to pick? I'm going to pick... So this will determine uh, which skins we get, assuming I get uh, far enough in this in order to get any skins. Uh, let's go with...
cruise with them. Sure. Why not? Um, so you can see uh, now we've got some activities here. Can, completing these activities will give us points, which advances us along here and gets us prizes. So we get the fireworks, we get skins, uh, we get some uh, some booster drugs. <laughs> I'm probably not going to get much on this character. Um, the Minmatar one is a little bit difficult to advance um, without doing the combat sites, which can be difficult. Um, <clears throat> so on my on my other characters I've managed to get uh, the second skin here but that's that's a, been about it for me um, I haven't really uh, <clears throat> I haven't looked into uh, what's necessary to be successful in the combat sites and they are uh, not easy um, I have done the the mining sites um, you'll want to be in a fleet of at least three, even to do the the uh, limited, which are the most basic. Um, uh, otherwise, you're not going to be able to to complete it in time. Um, you will also uh, want to have a venture um, <laughs> fitted with decent tank, and we will get into uh, those fittings in a later episode. And you'll want to have. Uh, your drone skill um, up to at least two so that you can fly the two drones that the ve that the venture is capable of carrying um, and uh, yeah um, there is also make sure I'm I think. Okay, so um, there is also uh, a path that we can follow. Um, sort of a race, or uh, I don't know. I guess uh, more of a like a rally, right? Where you've got you've got specific points you're supposed to to hit. I don't know if it's uh, timed. If there's any kind of you know prize for best time or something. I know I'm not getting best prize on any of my characters, uh, so oh, did I do the dumb thing? I think I did do the dumb thing. I did. I was not paying attention. All right, so. Um, Anytime you want to stop the ship, you can just hit this minus here. Um, you can't do that while, while warping, but anytime you're just kind of moving through space normally, you can. Um, I was too busy talking and not paying attention to what I was doing. So, um, <clears throat> I missed the fact that we made it to our destination. Um, so, uh, anyway. Um, there is, uh, so the Liberation Games reenactment, those are the combat sites. Um, there are some data complexes to scan down. I've found those very difficult to find. Um, I haven't spent a ton of time looking for them, but, uh, you know, if there's some kind of pattern to where they, uh, tend to be, I haven't figured it out. Um, anyway, so we're going to look for a beacon. Um, the parades are always going to be at beacons. And we're looking for one that it, it'll start with RFS. Um, <coughs> and, you know, something parade. Uh, that's the uh, name of the... Uh, it's a Republic Drive fleet ship. Active. Those Glashakim in this case. Um, so that's the name of the flagship for this particular uh, parade fleet. 
anyway um, the uh, the agency um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can find in here um, we'll deal with most of it at a future date uh, for now this is all we need all right so we will find our flagship uh, we will target it and we'll launch our fireworks um, you only have to hit it with one you can see it's gone through challenge complete um, so now uh, we will jump back Orb drive active and there's my fireworks going off that's pretty cool if you play for any length of time you'll end up with a pretty good variety of fireworks um, and uh, a lot of them are real interesting <clears throat> okay so um, in our notifications feed the uh, we just got 5,000 skill points for uh, shooting the fireworks at the parade um, you can see it pops up a notice here um, letting us know that we have unallocated skill points uh, as I said before we're gonna be saving those for later um, other information you can see on here right so I've completed training biology skill level one um, in we injected the biology skill. Here's some other skills that I finished training uh, overnight. There's uh, this guy who I've increased standings with. Um, so basically, any just kind of notifications will pop up there. Um, another word on skills real quick you want to make sure that this training queue is never empty um, obviously you can get skill points uh, which you can spend um, to train things relatively instantly or faster um, but you always want to be training something right um, Eve is a game of time and patience um, and there's you don't uh, you don't improve your skills by just doing those activities or anything like that um, it just takes time to train them uh, so as long as the training queue is never empty um, you're always going to be advancing uh, towards whatever your goals are um, I'm also going to switch this to floating so I can see what's going on. Um, Drive active. Now, as far as plans, um, long-term goals, um, for this character, long-term goal is to do everything in the air career program. Um, so that's going to be a lot of stuff. Um, I know, uh, that I'm going to need to be able to shoot stuff. So that means enforcer skill plan, um, and soldier fortune skill plan are going to be relevant. Um, there's a lot of overlap between those. Um. So, major difference here, right? So you can see I've already got small projectile turret, rapid firing, basically weapon skills. Um, here we've got propulsion jamming. So um, that's basically for using uh, modules to, to uh, trap other ships, um, slow them down so they can't escape or so that they'll be easier to hit. Um, 
I have also uh, added some skills from the producer uh, skill list. So industry is going to improve manufacturing. Um, there's going to be that's going to affect how long it's going to take to complete several of the missions uh, that we have. Um, on the manufacturing list, um, again, industry, um, trade, uh, trade will affect our, um, how much stuff we can buy and sell. Um, some of these others are, are fitting skills. Uh, I don't, this small dot here means I don't have the skill uh, available yet, so I'd have to acquire the skill book. A lot of skill books are going to be acquired um, either as mission rewards um, or in uh, in the packs that we rece drive, receive from the Air Career Program rewards. Um, so I'm not going to buy any of these skills. I'm going to basically wait until I acquire them naturally for now. Um, at some point in the future I will buy any skill points, uh, skill books to uh, uh, to fill in holes um, uh, that don't get filled through the normal uh, career mission and uh, air career program activities. Uh, anyway, so that's that's kind of basically what I've done so far. Um, Orb drive active. Let's see. Another thing that's worth looking at is project discovery. <coughs> um, you'll probably want to go through the uh, introduction to it. I've done plenty of it before, so I'm going to go ahead and skip the tutorial. But basically, um, you'll you want to identify different regions, right? So here, this one looks to me like it's two regions, um, and I happen to recognize this one because it's one of the ones that they use for testing. But that doesn't mean that I remember exactly how it's supposed to look. All right, so there's my best guess. I'll hit submit. We'll see how good I did. Not bad at all. Um, so again, this one, um, you can see that this is one that they use for testing your skill um, or testing your accuracy. Um, so that's why they've got this. Uh, already defined region that to show you essentially how close you were to uh, what's considered correct. Um, so this one, let's see. This looks like a region. There's maybe a question of whether this is one region or two. I think I'm going to call it two because it looks like there's maybe a little bit of a split right there. All right, so I'm going to put a line right through there. Probably could have just as reasonably grabbed all of that as a single group. Yeah, which is what they wanted me to do. All right, so you can see here, 
got a 55%. Not so great. So this one looks like three to me again. Good. All right. Uh, Bob drive active. So I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, since we'll not be able to finish another one before we dock. And so, uh, what I plan to do tonight is uh, run through the Explorer accepted. career tree, um, or the Explorer career track, um, in part because it's fairly easy, and it's also uh, fairly short. It's only got five missions, and the other ones have ten. So, uh, we will accept this mission. That's going to give us a new ship. <coughs> okay, so um, what I'm going to do is drag this contents here. I'll go strip fitting. That'll take off everything that's installed on the current Corvette. Go into the ship hangar. Uh, well, first let me just double check that everything ended up in here as I wanted. Looks like it did. So we will assemble this first. Um, and I'll usually We'll just shorten the name to make it easier to find. Um, so Reapers, uh, or whatever your faction Corvette are, not really valuable. Um, I would... Oh. Because I'm still in it. Okay. So anyway, typically a Reaper or, again, whatever Corvette you are, just trash it uh, whenever you're done using it. You can always get a new one by clicking Board My Corvette right here. Um, all right, so for this one, we're just going to go out and get some stuff, and we don't really need anything fitted to the ship, so we're going to just go do that. All right, and we're going to warp to location. Warp drive active. Uh, we can zoom in and take a little bit closer look at our ship here. Kind of a weird looking little ship. Very open frame design. Um, go ahead and read that if you like. You'll get through it and get the same text. I've read it a couple of times. Uh, and we're going to go through this acceleration gate. Warp drive active. There we go. Uh, click open this box here. She tells us to grab the stuff. We're going to do that.
just hit loot all. Close that, and we'll head through the acceleration gate. Uh, if I thought about it, I would have put the uh, civilian afterburner on here so we can do this a little bit faster. But it's fairly quick on its own. All right, so uh, this is an example of what a data site will look like. Um, these things with the rings around them are the things that will have your uh, prize that you're looking for. We'll see that again in the next site. Um, or in the next mission, I should say. I think uh, while we're doing this, I change my settings. We'll go to compact member list and show text only and show timestamps so we know how long ago it was. Um, Orb drive active. That's my preference for uh, for chat channels. Um, having the compact list over here lets me see more. I'm looking for red and yellow flashing over here uh, that would tell me someone is around and up to no good. Um, so this is going to be a relic site. You'll have uh, destroyed stations or ships. That's going to be where the prizes are. And then the, uh, uh, I believe the next one is a gas site. Uh, bumping into rocks. Orb drive active. Yeah, so here's gas site. Um, there'd be a specific gas cloud or something that you'd want to go to and suck up all the gas. Orb drive active. And that's it for that mission. So. We'll head back. Um, and we'll fit this stuff Don't to our ship and Don't get ready to do the next one. Alrighty, complete the mission. Request the next mission. Uh, so, proof of discovery, data. Um, oh. Alright, so let's go to our ship fitting. Uh, go to our, let's see. Uh, so the afterburner on there. So the uh, gun on there. our core probe launcher. We'll load the probes in there. Uh, for this one we'll need the data analyzer and for the next one we'll need the relic analyzer. And out we go. Okay, so um, <clears throat> normally we'd want to go and find a safe spot to do this since we're in a beginner system. I'm not really going to take the time to do that. Again, that's something we'll go over later. But for now, we'll open our probe scanner window. 
Um, we have probes loaded here, so we're going to need to launch them. And there's a pretty high density here. Uh, we can uh, left click and drag to rotate. We can right click to move around. Uh, if we double click on something, then that'll center our view on that. Um, for right now, we're just going to click Analyze. So that's going to send out a sensor pulse uh, that'll give us information on these various red X's over here. Okay, so we've got relic site, relic site, data site, data site is what we're looking for. Uh, a relic site here, which is 100% uh, identified, and a gas training site that's 100% identified. So we're going to double click on this data site. Uh, I'm going to use my mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. And I want to get my box here centered on that circle as well as I can. Uh, we will reduce our radius and hit analyze again. Uh, you can see we're at 54.8%. I believe this one for a beginner's site should get us up to 100%. Oh, not quite. Okay, so we get to keep going. So again, center it as best we can. Rotate so we get the third dimension. Zoom in a little bit more to get a little bit better. Get it. I'll reduce our scanning radius again. Try a different site. So we can see on here there's a couple of these that have this symbol. That's the data site symbol. Um, so we'll try scanning down this guy. check our position. Um, now you can see how these two, this one and this one, are linked by a line. One of those is going to be the real site and one of them is not. so we can see everything. Okay. There we go. Now we're making progress. Reduce our radius. Zoom in a little bit. Adjust our position. Got it. 
good feeling about this one. Alrighty. <clears throat> so now we've got that 100%. Now, the cool thing is um, we've got a relic site, we've got a gas site, and another gas site that are all 100% scanned down. As long as nobody else hits those first, those are still going to uh, be there um, in the future. So we're not going to have to rescan down those again unless someone else hits those hits them first. Um, so I'm going to recover my probes. They go into my inventory. I'll go ahead and reload now so I don't forget. Uh, and then we will warp to this data site. Warp drive close active. that. Alright, so, as I said, the thing with the uh, ring spinning around it, you can read that text if you want to. What we're going to do is get up close to it. Uh, our range is 5,000 meters, so we have to be at least that close in order to uh, open it. We need to lock target. Once it's locked and we are in range, and click our data analyzer, and this will bring up our hacking screen. So we're going to uh, connect these nodes. Notice the number four pops up. That means that I'm four nodes away from something interesting. That could be something good, could be something bad. Uh, we won't know until we get there. So three, two, two. So maybe this way. Oh. Alright, so that's a defensive system. That's a bad thing. Probably our goal is right next to it. So we'll see if maybe we can sneak around. Yeah, one. So it's going to be one of these two is where we're trying to go. Here we go. System core. That's our goal. Once we've defeated this, uh, we're going to be able to open up this box. And... Um, so you'll notice strength down here, 10, that means it does 10 damage to us uh, each time we hit it, and coherence is its hit points basically, right? So our strength is also 10, so we're going to need to hit this twice. We've got 15 hit points left. Fortunately, we do damage first. So we hit it, take 10 damage, we've got 5 left, but we hit it again. That kills it before it's able to damage us. So we are successful. And we'll take our proof of discovery and head back to dock. And while we're doing this, let's see, we've, uh, okay, so what are we, Completed, submitted a sample, hacked a container, complete mission two. Docking permission requested. Docking Got request a reward accepted. bundle. So that's cool. Uh, let's see, scan the cosmic signature to 100%. Okay. Very cool. So let's go in here. Uh, we'll expand this a little bit. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to basically snag everything except for this Minmatar min one. Um, yeah, you can do all your uh, shift, con click, control, click, uh, drag box to select, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we'll redeem to current station. Um, and we got a skill book. So we're going to inject that. And go to our skill catalog. This is going to be under social. It's the social skill. Um, so 5% bonus per level to NPC agent, corporation, and faction standing increases. We want to 
train this up real quick. Um, the faster we can increase standing, basically, the faster we can get to uh, the good missions. Um, it'll also reduce our costs uh, for certain things like manufacturing, buying and selling stuff, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Go ahead and put that there. Um, right, obviously, I'm not going to complete training it in this session, uh, but we should be close to done with level three um, by the time we log in again tomorrow. Um, now, one other thing I wanted to point out in the skills here, right, we've got our gray dots, right, blue means we're training, uh, the flashing white and blue uh, is what we're currently training, and if it was white, then that would be already trained, then you've got these yellow, that means that we need to be omega in order to reach those skill levels. Um, so... Go ahead and complete this. Request our next mission. Gonna do the same thing, but for relics. So we'll accept that. Close it, head out. All right, so let's see if we got lucky. Yeah, all right, so we've still got a relic site here. We don't have to scan it down again. That's we can right. just jump Active. in and get her done. So again, you can read that text on your own mission if you want. It's going to be basically the same as before. We approach to within 5,000 meters. Uh, instead of the data analyzer, we're going to use the relic analyzer this time. And it works pretty much the same way. And we got lucky this time, we managed to skip the uh, defensive node and open the cargo. Um, I usually unlock as soon as I open it. Um, if you're in a site that's got multiple ah, things to hack, dang it, do I need to hack it again? I might have made a mistake. Yeah, so all right anyway usually I open cargo unlock right away that way um, I don't confuse myself trying to uh, go to containers that have already act um, Warp drive active it's typically if you're doing a um, a relic site will often only have one container, but data sites will um, often have multiple containers. Um, and especially if it's an event, uh, some of the event uh, data sites that you scan down have um, six, seven containers, maybe even more. Um, for like the winter event ones. Oh, and we are colliding with this rock. So I'm gonna just double click in space here. That'll, well, let's see. All right, we'll stop to cancel my warp. I'll double click in space here and that'll just send me towards 
that location. That'll get me away from this rock. Uh, until we can get a straight shot at home. All right, so probably good now. Warp drive active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right. Complete that. Request the next one. Uh, and accept it. This will be the gas pass. Which again, hopefully, do not forget this gas pass key. You can't get into the thing without it. Um, I swear every time but this one, I have forgotten that key. I've gone out to the gas site and then I've had to come back and get the key. All right, we'll open this again, hopefully. There is a gas training site, so we will warp to that. Warp drive active. Let's see, special offer. Three months of Omega. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's three months. Not a bad price, but we're not doing that on this. So you need the gas pass key in order to open this acceleration gate. Drive Without the key, active. you can't go in. And again, they're just kind of like, well, this is what it would look like if it was a real gas site. There'd be like a cloud of gas somewhere, and you'd see a harvestable cloud. So, all we need, though, is this proof of discovery. Got it, so we Don't will dock. Active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. And complete that. And that's it for the Explorer career path. Let's see he's red now because he's got nothing for us. Um, Go up here, see what we got for rewards. So increased our standings, that's cool. Gas site, increased standings, complete mission. So each of these are specific tasks that are in one of these. Um, so let's see, for Explorer, right? Career agent missions. Um, hacking, we've done hacked one container, etc. Um, we'll explore all of those in due time. So for now we're just going to claim all of these. Go up here. Um, I'm going to leave, again, leave the expert system, but we're going to 
redeem everything else. And uh, again, we've got a skill, uh, connections. <clears throat> so uh, connections improves effective standing uh, with friendly NPCs. So uh, for example, I bring up info here, look at standings. Um, here's my standings with this particular person, uh, my standings with the corporation, and my standings with Minmatar Republic as a whole. Um, the uh, If the Minmatar Republic was higher than all of either of these, it would take precedence. Uh, basically, your effective standing is the higher of these three. Um, <coughs> so, uh, connections would add a 4% modifier per level to uh, um, to each of these. So, uh, we will train that, uh, I believe. Yeah, so we need to have social three in order to start training it. So we'll go ahead and drop that right there. And then the next one is four hours. Um, we want these because again, it's um, having higher standings is going to give us better rewards. Going to access, uh, give us access to better, uh, better prices, uh, better missions, etc. So we want to increase our social skills uh, as much as possible. As you can see, they are limited. Um, the other one we're going to want. Uh, and we should get a skill book for it in the process of doing the career missions, either from career missions or from the air career uh, path stuff. We want negotiations. Um, so that'll give us more money. Um, if we can get, let's see, security. Uh, the specific ones, so like security connections, mining connections, uh, distribution connections will increase the loyalty point gain uh, for doing those kinds of missions. Um, diplomacy will help us uh, mitigate the negative effects of bad, bad standing, uh, which we are going to end up with some bad standing probably against uh, with uh, Amar, Empire, and Kaldari. Um, likewise, if we were Amar, uh, an Amar character, we would develop negative standing with Min Matar uh, just in the course of doing normal missions because they are enemies. Um, and so criminal connections will help you with criminal factions, so that would be pirates, uh, etc. So, anyway, that's going to be it for us for today. Um, and uh, tomorrow, we'll start in on the other career paths. Um, so, that's it for me today. Have a good one. Take care of yourselves.